to be entered into the scroll of remembrance, the Jews of the world forgiven of their sins and made righteous by God, believing in me that the new covenant is here, must also be in right standing with God. If you are a good person who does not intentionally harm others, and revere and esteem God's name and heed him, you're in right standing with God. And this is in contrast to the Christians. A murderer, a child molester, a life beater can accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and they get to go to heaven and be with Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done. That's not true with God. Just because you're sin free, you say, well, you're sin free. It's good. It's good for you. But that doesn't mean you're getting anything from that. And this is the this is the God of Christians think performs human sacrifice for them. I can't tell you, remember, I, I was an atheist for 50 years, not a religious person, and now that I've learned what Christianity is, I, I, I hope Paul, I have other words that I don't get to use them anymore. <laughs> Rabbis and religious leaders have been dismissed by God and are not right standing with him. He says, when, when, when the shepherd David, my servant, comes, who is Moshe, of course, and I, I've never heard, I can't find any videos where I hear any rabbi talking about this. <laughs> and I know they pray for him. Orthodox does every week. It's one of the fundamental principles of Rambam in the Jewish faith. Uh, did you know he was going to have a reckoning with you? We, and what do you think the reckoning is about? Messianic air. World to come. This is the day of enlightenment. Reason. Medicine. Science. you got to learn how to read the Bible. Guess who brings the rest for God? His servant. His prophet. The righteous servant of God. Prophet like Moses. Elijah. Guess who brings the reckoning? Same guy. I am Moshe. And y'all thought I was going to come down here and love on you. You got the wrong. That's not why he picked me. <laughs> Although he's tempered me a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot happier, smiling, <laughs> nice person. You know. But anyway, yeah, you, you're just me. And there's only one way you're coming out of it. You're going to have to hold me up high, number one. And number two, you're going to have to teach the matters of those two books he dictated in that time. You're going to have to tell your thoughts all over the world that the Messianic era that we teach is not going to happen. I've seen Jews and Judaism, they got all kinds of videos on it. The world was going to love them. Dissolve the Jew. He said, those are great, those are great verses, great verses for antiquity, but. Uh, if, if, if you see what looks like prophecy, and understandably so, that it reads like prophecy, if it can't happen, <laughs> you got to say, huh, what else? What other purpose could God have? Hey, I don't know. What if it's just for a religious purpose, just so we, we think about something that could be, or, or that's how we'll feel when we are in the spiritual heaven of Ezekiel 1 and 10, or... I like the book of Daniel, because he knew what the Christians were going to do. They, they think that book, which is not even a, a prophetic book, it's not in the book of the prophets, um, that they can figure out when Jesus is going to return. I just, I just went through this in my last video. But uh, he's not coming back. See, I got, I'm going to be with the greatest anti-missionary of all time. I got just, I got knowledge, and, and I had the ability to deliver it in God's power. And in the voice that he wants, the inflection he wants, he literally, you know, they're in me. And I don't have control of anything. And that's part of this 13 years also. It's just, it's a long, it just takes a long time to get used to it. <laughs> the Holy Spirit came up to me one day, so comes over to me. He's got a caricature of himself. He's just like God. He doesn't have any former image. Okay? They're like two great big clouds. That's how I think about them. But he's got a caricature of himself that they can put into my mind. I call them visuals. 
and I handled them all day long. Visuals, that, pictures they put in my mind. Uh, God says it's a better way to communicate. Words and pictures. You, you've heard a picture's worth a thousand words. We put them together. And uh, he said, don't you think God's slow? And he said, I call him pokey because he's so slow. And I'm like, you know, if I'm listening to you talk about things like that, I'm the one who ends up starting to hurt somewhere. <laughs> Get away from me. And <laughs> you laugh. He, you know, he says, I've never had to work. I've never felt pain. I know what pain is, though, kid. Don't say it. <laughs> and he said, I'm always happy, you know. I get quiet sometimes, but anyway, he's quite the comedian. The greatest comedian of all times throughout the universe. As he would have me tell you. As the anointed one of Isaiah 11, God has appointed me to be a leader of his people, teaching the matters of Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord and this book. And that's what God says. He says, with, he says I'm going to have a reckoning with the rabbi and dismiss him, and then I'm going to appoint my servant David, that's Moshe, as a leader amongst them, not a king, as a ruler amongst them. And really, you're hearing everything I'm going to be doing. I should end up with a large following, a multitude, starting with the many. And these are the things I'm going to be teaching heaven as Elijah, uh, these books, uh, what it means to have a spirit in you and God is in him, and on and on. And that, that will be the height of, of my renown, I guess, as opposed to a king of the world. Gathering my kingdom. Rabbis and religious leaders can be coming right standing with God by also teaching the matters of these books. To remain in right standing and to avoid the evil inclination and sin again, losing your righteousness, you must return to the observance of Judaism, being mindful of the teaching of God's servant Moses, whom God charged at order with laws and rules for all Israel rather than strict compliance required of every Israelite. God makes it clear in Malachi 3. Just because the new covenant's here, I know many, many of the Jewish people are still not going to heed me, revere, and sing my name. Many will. And those that do will find a way into the school of remembrance. But you got to throw in right standing. That's, that's the new teaching that comes to me, the teacher of righteousness. As I said, the original covenant remains the same with the amendment to be mindful and the inclusion of sin forgiveness. And God repeats over and over, and I will be your God and you will be my people. It's not like he ever stopped that. It's really when he says those things, it's an affirmation and confirmation of the first covenant because that's what it was. Do everything I give to Moses for y'all to do. I'll be your God, you'll be my people. Do you know the Christians believe that they took the New Covenant. They took the New Covenant. That's what New Testament means. Testament and Covenant, same thing. They said they changed it. They said, okay. They, basically what they said was, well, it's not sin forgiveness, you know, written by God. No, it's because he sent us Jesus. That's the New Covenant. He, he changed it. Well, it does have to change. God tells me he will let me attend the high holidays from Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur and all the liturgy and customs in between the 10 days of repentance, Sukkot, that follows four days after Yom Kippur, and Shemini at Zeret. I know I didn't get that right. When I am in Israel, but not in Houston. I just had a good time being there and enjoyed the friendliness of all the people. Shortly after Sukkot, that when I first started conversion classes, my father had a heart attack, and I never returned to complete the conversion classes. I could have a couple of weeks um, later when my dad had recovered from a quadruple bypass. But God said no, ending my affiliation with Beth Yeshua. I will convert Orthodox in Jerusalem, become an Israeli 